Hey everyone, it's Ankur Kumar. I work for a consulting company called Publicis Sapient, and I'm going to share a transformation journey of a wealth management portal in today's session. So let's get started. I just wanted to give you a glimpse of my career journey. I've been with the uh, industry for 22 plus years. Uh, started as a Java programmer. I uh, have been a speaker in uh, several different uh, tech conferences, and I'm a blogger on different platforms. And you can follow me on Twitter or GitHub or LinkedIn. So this journey has been very close to my heart uh, because uh, I've been involved from day one as a chief architect of this journey over the course of almost four years. And um, in, in during those four years, kind of used many different open source cloud native as well as uh, different uh, solutions to achieve what business was looking for. So if you're not familiar with wealth management, just a uh, um, you know, quick uh, intro. Uh, we all have been using in some shape or form wealth management systems, but for our, our advisor, it's it's mostly an investment or advisory service, which they serve to different types of clients um, on, on need basis. So an advisor, just to give you a glimpse of uh, two different personas and as part of the wealth management journey. One is the advisor who understands um, you know, your financial planning aspect, who identifies um, a prospect who wants to invest in um, a financial, say, suite of instruments, and who builds the relationship with the pro prospect, make uh, him or her a client, and then starts the whole financial planning process, retirements, college fund, and whatnot. So the journey is very, you know, kind of a collaborative and it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a continuous journey. So they need to constantly interact with the client, manage the portfolio and uh, keep advising on a on need basis. Uh, from the client perspective, they also want to trust the advisors, uh, share their financial information, um, view the details of what the investment portfolio have, how they are exchanging information with their advisor securely, uh, can they access their information on real-time basis or on time basis? And um, so those are kind of, and with new uh, business, uh, a new, you can say, patterns emerging like robo-advisory where um, advisors, you don't even have human advisors involved. That system will tell you what is your wealth portfolio or how you should adjust it. So from client perspective, there are different, again, um, mechanism available to interact with the wealth management system or wealth management portal in this case. So I'll just start with a quote from one of the advisors uh, is that if whatever technology, as a technologist, we try to build the best we can, but if the technology can't help uh, with the, the, in serving the advisor client, so it's no useful. So I want to start with that uh, to Keep that in mind we, when we started building that is that our uh, key focus areas were in four different dimensions, like how do we increase the operational even, um, efficiency of the platform um, during the whole business journeys we are talk, going to talk about. Uh, how do we make sure the platform is scalable, extensible, you know, available and uh, for the uh, making sure that, you know, when you have millions of uh, clients logging into the platform. How can you make sure the platform is stable? Uh, then uh, the third aspect of the user experience, how you are ensuring the collaboration happens between advisor and client, how both are collaborating on the platform, they have the good experience. And uh, at the same time, you're also launching new business uh, capabilities because it's a very competitive field. Um, if you're not launching capabilities, you are going to uh, lag behind from your competition. So the outcome business is look, was uh, looking for as part of this platform was how can you reduce the time to market, uh, cost of ownership, better brand positioning and all. So just to keep those business objective in mind, we started our journey, um, started defining um, technology and architecture stack, how you can leverage uh, microservices, uh, Spring ecosystem, open source, uh, and different uh, cloud native technology, as well as how you are uh, have you're offering the enriched experience with the accelerated delivery. So um, again, one of the my favorite quote is, "You don't do the best of uh, what you know. Uh, when you know better, you you can do better, right?" So it's a continuous learning journey. That's that's the key message. You can't build everything 
on day one. So with that note, we started our journey. And uh, one of the key aspects of the journey is that how do you think about uh, not only engineering aspect, like technology engineering is one pillar. How do you start thinking from the strategy perspective? How do you, uh, and there are different um, set of stakeholders and different set of experts involved in this whole process. So with customer experience, engineering product and um, and uh, strategy are the two or four pillars on which we, we need to make sure that it all emerges as um, to make this whole program successful. It's very important. So just wanted to highlight that before we go deep dive into any other thing. So having said that, um, just to give you a glimpse of business capabilities, which we started uh, cataloging as part of this initiative, that uh, this is a combination of capabilities which we wanted to build and 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 different and our product team helped build that uh, matrix just to make sure that you know um, you have the business uh, context first. Um, if you recall the domain driven design, it requires you to understand the, what business problem and business context you have before you actually jump into the problem. So with that, we started a streamlining. We started our journey in 2018. So we started streamlining how we'll go and how we will um, tackle the MVPs first and what will be our path of execution. Um, so at the core of it, um, our in key approach was how do you inculcate engineering mindset from the day one? And um, to do that, uh, again, technology and engineering to make sure that we are ready for the cloud. We are we were not initially on the cloud. Uh, so we wanted to make sure we are ready for the cloud. We are using the right microservices and quality uh, based architecture. We were also making sure that we have the right product and customer experience mindset. Uh, and we are continuously evolving in terms of how we are building the capability as well as how we are governing and make sure we are meeting all the business objectives. Right. So, so all once all those fundamental tenets are there, we kind of started making sure that we have the right architecture principles um, in consideration. So, open source, vendor neutral, and cloud native were three pillars we started um, looking for when we started talking about the technology stack or the solution landscape. So, these were the key pillars on which we wanted to make sure that our solution or our system is based upon. And uh, some of the other elements which are, um, you know, kind of making, ensuring that our user experience is composable. You promote a lot of self-service capability so that you are using automation and um, you're using a workflow slash, uh, you know, kind of a system-based flow um, and using the typical API-first approach and making sure the developer productivity is uh, under consideration. So all these different principles we have started with uh, uh, to make sure that our foundation is right. So with that mindset, I'm just going to, considering the confidentiality of the client, we can't share all the details, but this is a very high level architecture view where we had the advisor portal centric view and the, the client centric view from the client portal perspective. Then we had a API orchestration layer built on to, um, to expose the API um, and API aggregation service from the, uh, the core API layer, where core API layer was built using the microservices, different services. And then we had caching and messaging to support the microservices that how they are communicating with each other. And then the, we have a system of record layer, which is talking to different systems, uh, fetching the data and microservices are, you know, fetching the data from all these different systems. And then there are cross-cutting concerns that um, you need to enable, like whether observability and monitoring and logging is correct, uh, security is correct. Auditing is a very important aspect in a financial application. So you need to make sure security is also, and CI, CD, DevOps practices are in place. So these were the foundational tenets um, of the architecture we started with. So um, one thing which I just want to make sure that before you understand, that how we came up with the architecture, we started putting together some building blocks, like foundational building blocks that, um, and starting from the bottom is that uh, how, how do you manage, you know, the compute infrastructure layer? How do you make sure the container orchestration happens and what is the right uh, runtime engine on top of it? And then how do you are ensuring that, um, you know, there is a 
technology like container registry available, uh, ensuring the security is happening and secrets management is happening and CI/CD pipeline happening on top of it. And then the observability, release management, analytics, all those things are the core foundational building blocks. And um, although initially we were not on Kubernetes, uh, we were on Rancher, so it's um, now Rancher supports Kubernetes. And But in, when we started uh, you know, building that architecture, we were in, using uh, Kubernetes, then we eventually started migrating towards it. And on top of it, the last building block is your application, which is um, standing up um, on these basic tenets. So with this frame um, as a reference, you can see that from architecture perspective, we have started leveraging a lot of these uh, different technologies. And uh, as you can see, is that Spring has uh, an Angular where the key technologies in, in architecture uh, from application perspective, we started using um, Elastic for all the caching and searching capabilities and Redis also for caching, uh, Postgres for database, MuleSoft for API management. Um, then we used uh, uh, Observability New Relic uh, and uh, a lot of cloud native tools. You can see Jenkins and Kubernetes as we started migrating later on. Um, but, but this is how we are mapping all those different layers. And uh, from cloud perspective, making sure that we are using uh, initially, it was on-prem, and then we started migrating to AWS. So with that uh, basic uh, building blocks uh, in consideration, we started moving towards uh, you know the more stable, more uh, development management portal, which we wanted to build. So one thing which uh, was very critical in this whole journey was the integration. And why? Because uh, you can't build all those capabilities which we are going to, which we have seen uh, in that capability matrix, if you remember, um, by building it uh, and, and then meeting the timelines. So we started integrating a lot of vendor capabilities and um, vendor, you can say, systems and bringing some of the capabilities uh, which are mostly like it's typical build versus buy. So we, we brought those technologies. So uh, integrating with in some cases, you have to do SSOs. In some cases, you have to integrate using API. In some cases, you, you need to use event-driven integration or messages-based integration, and some are legacy. And um, then we were looking for what is the right framework. And we, we built a in-house, uh, you can say, integration framework built on top of Spring because Spring uh, was the only uh, solution which we could find at that point of time, which was meeting different use cases, which were... Uh, for these different complex vendor integration. So if you look at, um, if you have seen the, the EI patterns, uh, which are available, and there is a reference that there are more than 30 patterns, and we, we kind of used a lot of these patterns uh, when uh, integrating with different uh, vendors and different scenarios. So you can see, uh, I've done, and Spring uh, ecosystem supports a lot of these patterns, so that really helped us to accelerate some of these journeys. So um, if you, the other way to look around is instead of um, reinventing the whole wheel and trying to figure out and building some of these capabilities and trying to do research in different um, industry or uh, you know technology domain, what is the best fit? Um, I feel that Spring ecosystem um, provides you uh, a kind of a reference model, right? Reference architecture where you can choose these technology which... Uh, with confidence and especially with financial services where you don't want to risk taking something um, which in you know introduces security vulnerabilities and all that so the highlighted in blue are we started with started integrating because they were out of the box available we were easy to get the skill set available in the market and they were meeting the demands of the you know uh, scalability availability integration um, and the cloud native nature of it helped us to build it and make sure that uh, we are ready for cloud for tomorrow when we'll uh, move these application to the AWS, right? So, so Spring ecosystem, um, I really love the way how uh, we have uh, the support available from the community and uh, uh, you don't have to uh, look out for different vendors for each of the different solutions and uh, the, the, Integration of all these components is also one thing I just want to highlight it. It was much more easier 
uh, to integrate. For example, if I'm in using Spring Cloud Gateway or Spring uh, Messaging, it's easier to integrate these with um, your Spring Boot based microservices and all. So that really helped us uh, to make sure that we are we are using something similar, not that you know we're trying to and keep it simple as well. So with that, um, one thing which uh, um, in platform engineering is, you know, you must have hearing all these things in recent time. And we started with the DevOps mindset and then we started moving towards a uh, platform engineering approach. And uh, a lot of these things happened over the course of a uh, few years, but just wanted to highlight a few of the things which we did as part of the journey. Um, and from dev side, we did, uh, redesign search we, we initially built, we did uh, improve the ingestion approach for how we were sending the data to the search. We built the feature toggle functionality. All this is something which is, you know, a lot of um, these technology were made possible by using the open source and uh, different technologies that we, we just talked about. From um, operations perspective, again, like the observability dashboard using Neural Lake and some of the uh, you know, the uh, Dora metrics, like SRE metrics, uh, the golden signals, which we call them, uh, we kind of started um, tracking those and ensuring that we have the right alerts available, synthetic monitoring is set up and all that. So the, the this maturity, you know, it started building in the team itself. So with that, we started moving, we, we moved from when we started, we were doing some manual builds and we moved to the automated one. We started to make sure that we are using the efficient uh, productive tools, uh, keep the team high performing and from uh, more collaborative engineering side. So with all that technology and architecture uh, and uh, uh, the, uh, the whole ecosystem, the most important aspect is what impact we created. And uh, I just want to quote one of the advisors feedback. Um, after the releases, few releases that, you know, they were very happy about how the platform was able to meet their demands, uh, launch new features quickly, and the clients were, their clients were very happy to use that platform. So we have been able to onboard 20,000 plus advisor, 10 million plus clients, different broker dealers um, in financial services space, and then uh, made a lot of uh, engineering based, uh, you can say, releases possible where we brought the uh, market launch uh, for almost like every um, on-demand basis, uh, eventually when we were reaching that maturity. So this is just the beginning. Uh, if you want to reach out to me for further details, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn and Twitter and happy to engage in any conversation. And uh, thank you so much for listening to me.